We present Paul Kermack and Robert Trotter in The Taste of Proof, adapted for radio from his novel of the same name by Bill Knox. The Taste of Proof. Chief Inspector Flynn, Brian Comby. Thanks, officer. I'll be out straight when you want me, sir. Thank you. Cigarette, Frank. I'll take that from anybody. Well, what is it now? Glasgow cops started making social calls on untried prisoners? <laughs> Not yet, no. How are you getting on? Ah, Marlin is all right, if you know the ropes. And you do, eh? I was beginning to think you'd learned some sense. It's four years since the last time. Now steady, I haven't admitted doing anything. This time, that's a formality. And with a record like yours, robbing your employers was just damn stupid. You're pretty sure of yourself. Look, even if you are the CID boss at Millside Division... You stop you... fooling about. You know the charge. Early this morning, along with a person or persons unknown, having broken into premises occupied by the Glen Alt Whiskey Liqueur Company at Wood Street, Mill Side, forced open a lockfast safe and stolen £3,000... Belonging to the said company. Look, I was in court, remember? So what? The evidence. A beat cop saw a car with two men aboard leaving Wood Street at 1 a.m. Now, cars are scarce around Wood Street at that time, so he noted the number... Then went looking for trouble. Clever of it. The Glen Alt office had been raided. The back of the safe jammed open. Oh, you know, these firms with old safes. They should know better. No fingerprints around, Frank. Everything wiped. Except one thing. A cap of a whiskey bottle we found in the wastebasket. A whiskey bottle that had been in the manager's cupboard. The bottle cap had one fingerprint. Yours. I don't mind listening, Chief Inspector. Then we found the car, a stolen car, abandoned. Again, wiped clean of prints. But the Glenault cash box was in it, forced open and empty. And there was a pen knife halfway down the back of the seat. A pen knife with a broken blade. A break that matched the mark on the cash box lock. Not my knife. No. The initials DD were on the handle. DD? You have been busy. DD, Douglas DL. A young clerk in the main office who wasn't home at all last night and didn't show up for work this morning. Is that a fact? Oh, Humby, let's save time. It was meant to look like an outside job, but it wasn't. Now, you drive a van for the Glen Oil Company. A truck. There is a difference. Yesterday evening, you were almost two hours late on your last delivery run. So late that the night watchman was the only one around to let you into the warehouse parking lot beside the office. The truck's feed pump seized. It took time to fix. That feed pump hasn't been touched in weeks. Humby, you had somebody hidden aboard that van. Somebody who had a key to the door that leads into the office block. Later, well, he opened that window and helped you in from the street. <laughs> Did you think that all up by yourself, Chief Inspector? I've got a wife who'll swear I was at home before 11 o'clock last night. And I didn't go out again till your mob grabbed me at breakfast time. Your wife's law that way. But I've got you, Humby. Now I want young DL. And the 3,000 that was stolen. Well, it's not at my place. We looked. Maybe DL has it. You'd better find him. Eh? Well, it's your hard luck if we don't, Frank. A first-time amateur. And he skips off with 3,000 pounds while you get a possible five years. I'll take my chance. Nothing to say, Chief Inspector. Nothing at all. Afternoon, sir. Hello, Mac. All quiet? Well, I'm doing my expenses, sir. Oh, then, Sergeant McLeod, it's really quiet. <laughs> Where's Inspector Moss? Here I am, Colin. I've been out for a haircut. <laughs> Looks like they use a lawnmower. Well, it'll last this way till next year. Come on through. Aye, ah, right. Ah, well, thanks very much, then. Goodbye. Eh, hey. Sarge. All right, Beach. What is it this time? Shut the door, Phil, will you? Okay. <clears throat> well, 
heard you on it, but Lenny. Uh, so Frank Humby. Mm -hmm. No dice. He won't talk. Yeah. His wife's different. <laughs> you were lucky you missed her. You? Uh huh. Sit down and tell me about it. Hey. Well, you know Jean Humby. Red headed and with a temper to match. But she's fond of Humby. Women can be funny that way. That's why I'm a bachelor. Uh, the kind of bachelor who picks up free meals at my place. And I have a wife and two kids to support. Oh, don't you start. Anyway, Jean Humby has changed her idea of the times. Has she? Uh -huh. That's unusual. Uh, she said Frank was home by 11.30 last night, remember? Uh -huh. Now she says it was 12.30. And the Glenholt raid was about 1 a.m. What's her story now? Oh, that she laid it on a bit thick the first time to protect Humby. She thought the break-in had been around midnight. Right. Uh, what else did she see? That Frank told her he had, uh, he had met a pal called Douglas D.L. and he had a few drinks. Did he now? Well, it's more than he told me. Then what? Well, she gives Humby hell if he comes home tight. So he'd walked round for a spell to sober up, or so he said. Oh, Phil, I don't care what anybody says. We've got Humby over a barrel. That finger for that. You tell her. You mean she's coming back? Tomorrow, she says, with proof. Proof? Proof of what? How the hell should I know? She just went storming out. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Something wrong? Yeah, it's just my guts again. Well, that damned ulcer. Now, why the hell don't you let some surgeon carve it out? I yeah, wouldn't be seen dead in an operating theatre. Well, what do you want, then? A plumber? Yeah, no, here. These will do it. Pills. Hey, that's a new kind. Aye, aluminium glycine. The chemist told me about them. Well, down the hatch. And she is. So, Humby told his wife he'd been drinking with Douglas D.L. Yeah, sounds like a stage one alibi. A pretty stupid one. Ah, D.L. will turn up. Uh, what have we got on him? Uh, nothing much. Age 26, works with a Glen Alt outfit as a clerk. A single, rents a room with a family over in Sharon Street. He comes from up north, isn't he? Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. His parents still live there. I've, uh, I've teleprinted the Aberdeen force to keep an eye open for them. We could use a photograph of D.L. We've got one. He dated one of the Glen Alt typists a few times. She let us have a snapshot we can enlarge. And that's about all we can do for now. Jean Humby. I'm not looking forward to her tomorrow. Right. Well, it's your turn. And you're welcome. Colin? Colin? Oh, blast that radio. Oh. Are you saying something, Mary? Are you reading that book or just sleeping in that chair? A bit of both, I suppose. Would you like some coffee? What time is it? Uh, oh, past eleven. If you want to sleep, you have a bed. All right. Coffee, then bed. I'm ready for both. Oh, damn. I'll get it. No, no, don't bother. The beef at beef me. Another quiet night at home shot to hell. Then... Oh, Phil, what's it this time? Jean Humby's dead. Dead? It's not there. I'm at her house now. Uh, it's that block of multi-story flats in Gradient Terrace. I'll be right over, Phil. <coughs> Damn. I suppose I can forget the coffee. Coffee? Oh, I'll be lucky if I see breakfast. I've got a feeling about this one, Mary. Just a feeling. When do you call it? Right, Phil. Hello, Doc. Hello, Colin. Give me a minute. I'm nearly through. Well, there she is. So is he. That's how she was found. Lying in front of that damn great stereo record player. Mm. The same clothes she was wearing this afternoon. Doc Williams reckons she's been dead maybe a couple of hours. Ah, that's a rough estimate. I'm a police surgeon, not a genius. Well, somebody really turned this place over. Drawers ripped out, things upended. Uh, the rest of the place is the same. No prizes for guessing what someone was looking for. 3,000 quid, but did he find it? Well, it seems that way. Uh, Superintendent Lawrence better tell you about that one. Scientific bureau style. He's in the kitchen. All right. But I thought we searched this place. We did. Uh, Colin, I'm ready now. Uh, uh, all right, Doc. Uh, cause of death. Oh, this one's worth a paper in any forensic journal. Glad for you, Doc. Really, we are. No, I mean it. All we've got at first glance is a, a bluish tinge around the lips. Though the fingertips and toes have the same signs. But um, look closer, Colin. Hmm? Her face. See anything there? Well, a small scratch to one side of her nose. Uh -huh. One or two marks around the chin, plus a large bruise on the back of her head. It's a burking, eh? I've only read about them till now. 
Doc, I'm just a simple ignorant cop. Oh, agreed. Burke. Burke and Hare. The old-time body snatchers, uh-huh. I remember. That's how they operated when they gave up digging in graveyards and went after fresher business. One held the victim down, sitting on his chest. The partner squeezed his left hand over the mouth and nostrils and used the right to keep the chin jammed up. Ah, uh, three minutes or so, and they'd a corpse. But the refinement here is she was coshed first. If she was unconscious, that would make it a one-man job. Thanks, Doc. Who found her, Phil? An uncle named uh, Joe O'Brien. He's waiting in the next flat. Mm-hmm. We've already checked the neighbours. They don't know anything. Do they ever? Anywhere? Right. Phil, she told you she'd come back with proof. I know. Uh, I've been thinking about that, believe mm-hmm. me. Ah, it'll keep ears down, Lawrence. Hello, Colin. Didn't hear you right. Oh, I'm just catching up. What's the scientific bureau side, Dan? Well, not a hell of a lot, but a few things. Starting with the stereo. Hmm? It's not strictly my territory. But it's, see the way the back's been unscrewed? Yes. Take a look. That wee space to the right of the amplifier. Oh, all right. Over here, you said? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. One blue canvas money bag empty. And that book of bank withdrawal slips. Stamped Glen Alt Limited. Phil, who was supposed to search this place? Sergeant McClellan. Well, I'll talk to him later. You want to see the rest of it? Please. I'll come through to the kitchen. Uh, Colin, I'll pack in now, but I'll be in touch about the autopsy report. Uh, thanks, Doc. See you. In here. Don't worry about fingerprints. This character wore gloves. Yeah. A tray... Two cups of saucer, sugar and milk. And electric kettle ready to be switched on. Our uncle says she knew he was coming. So he'd opened the door, eh? And maybe found Douglas D. Alley. Uh, who's he? Oh, someone we're looking for. Uh, and if you find him, what then? Well, right now, I'd let Frank Humbey have him for half an hour. But if there was any kind of scuffle, you should... In a multi-story block, TVs and radios going. <laughs> you could have a private war to yourself and no one would know. Yeah, I suppose so. Get our body moved, Phil. Then we'll see this Uncle Joe who found her. Ah, uh, she was a good girl, Mr. Thane. A rare wee girl. Uh, could I have a taste more of that whiskey? I mean, Jean wouldn't have grudged me it if she was here. Well, uh, here you are, Joe. Ah, uh, Joe. What, sir? God, no. Uh, <coughs> oh, that's better. Good. You see, you got here about 10.30, but the door was locked. Aye, so when nobody answered the door, well, I... <laughs> you see, there's this wee bit of celluloid I carry for emergencies, like. Did you learn to open a walk that way? In jail, mister. I used to be pretty good at the housebreaking. But you get too old for that caper. I've led the upright life for years now. So you went in and found her dead? Aye. Did you touch anything? Do you mean steal? Well, what do you take me for, eh? Only I. What did you do? I telephoned the police, of course. Then I waited a hell of a time till they got here. Three minutes. Uh, Control had a patrol car practically around the corner. Mm-hmm. O'Brien, why did you come here tonight? Well, Jean wanted me to help prove Frank was innocent. That you had the wrong man for that robbery job. How? Well, I manage this wee billiard hall now. and Well, I have some good pals there. That, I'll believe. You see, you always love this. He's got an ulcer. Well, he should be in hospital there. No harassing morning relatives. Is there any more of that whiskey? No. Uh, Look, how were you going to help Jean? Well, she had her own ideas. Something to do with this lad, D.L., that was supposed to be on the raid with Frank. D.L.? What about him? Well, that was what I was coming to find out. You see, she came to the billiard hall, and then this evening she phoned and asked me to come round here. She said she'd remembered something Frank had told her about D.L., and if it meant what she thought, she had you cops with the short hairs. <laughs> if what meant what she thought? That's what I was coming here to find out. Yeah, but I can tell you one thing. Frank was drinking with this lad, Dale, the evening before the robbery. Where? A pub called the Wyvern, about six o'clock that night. I put the word out I was interested, and that's what came back. Six o'clock? That's when Humby was still supposed to be repairing his truck. Ah, well, I don't know about that, mister. But where you've gone, he couldn't have killed Jean, could he? No, he couldn't. Phil, Uh take over here. Aye, right. I have a job to do. Here we are, Chief Inspector. Well, you want me? No. Right. We'll, uh, well, keep an eye on him afterwards. Frank. Frank, wake up. (laughs) Hmm? What the hell? Oh, no. 
Look, can't I even get some kip in peace? Sit up, Frank. <sighs> well, what is it this time? It's about your wife, Frank. Jane? What about her? she a little something? Yeah, I'm sorry, Frank. She's dead. Dead? Hmm. Jean? Dead? Murdered, Frank. Then the house was searched. Well, look, can I get out of here? Just see her, I mean. Oh, we'll fix it. I'll also have you taken out to the flat. We've got to know if anything else is missing. What? The money's gone. Frank, Dale was your partner on the Glen Holt job, wasn't he? Yeah. Did he know you had the money hidden at home? Yeah. Look, let it wait, eh? Please? All right, all right. I'm sorry, Frank. I'm really sorry. Morning, Colin. Hello, Phil. How much sleep did you get last night? Any more than you? I heard Frank Humby took it badly. Badly, but... Oh, I don't know. Headquarters wants an explanation about why we didn't find the money on that first search. Well... That's my problem. Chief Superintendent Ilford will want someone's head. Well, not before I find out what happened. This is my division. What else have we got, Phil? Well, that, uh, that story about Humby and Dale being in the pub together checks out. We got hold of a couple of the pub regulars, thanks to Joe O'Brien. Humby and Dale were talking in a corner for a spell, uh, and Humby had his Glen Oak truck outside. Right. Phil, I'm dumping a load of work on you. As usual. Well, search young Dale's lodgings again, mm -hmm. just in case. Right. Then head out to Bellini Prison and collect Humby. I fixed a release into our custody. Bring him to the flat and have him look around. How oh, about you? Uh, Sergeant McLeod first, then the Glen Oak place. Who's the boss there? Uh, George Greenlaw, he's managing director. Right, I'll be at headquarters after that. Uh, give my love to Buddha Elford. Oh, that'll help. I'll get started. Right, Phil. Uh, no. Sergeant McLeod. Sir? In here, please. Pronto. Yes, sir. This I could do without. Uh, you wanted me, sir? Yes, Mac. Close the door. Sir. Mac, who was with you when you searched Humby's place yesterday? D.C. Edwards, sir. Two of you. Yet neither of you checked inside the stereo set. No, sir. I, uh, I'm sorry. Mrs. Humby was being difficult. Uh, things were, well, awkward. You were in charge, Sergeant. Chief Superintendent Elford is going to want to know what went wrong. I know, sir. If, well, if we'd found that money, she wouldn't have been killed. Maybe. All right, Mac, let's have it. You said she was difficult. How difficult? She took a swipe at me with a milk bottle, sir. Oh, that's how she started. But, well, we just picked up her husband. So you let her away with it. Sir, am I still on full duty? You are, and I have a job for you. Call it penance if you want. Jean Humby was contacting people, trying to find out what her husband had been doing. And we know she was at her uncle's billiard hall. After that, it's a shoe leather job. Friends, anyone you can think of. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Well? Frank Humby's daughter is on her way over from Belfast by plane. Do you want her met at the airport? His daughter? Mm. Never mentioned a daughter. Joe O'Brien phoned in. He thought we should know. Uh, more like he wanted to save himself the price of a taxi. All right, fix it. Uh, how old is she? Oh, early 20, sir. Right. If you need me urgently, I'll be at the Glen Alt offices. It's about time we had a closer look at that end. Good morning, sir. Can I help you? I'm Chief Inspector Thane, Millside Division. Is Mr. Greenlaw in? Oh, yes. Uh, he said the police might be round. He, what we read about Mrs. Humby in the papers. Just a moment. Thanks. Yes, Barbara? Uh, Chief Inspector Thane to see you, Mr. Greenlaw. Right. Uh, bring him through, will you? Yes, Mr. Greenlaw. If you'll come this way, Chief Inspector. Fine, fine. Uh... Chief Inspector, hmm? do you mind if I ask a question? Go on. Uh, it's about Douglas. Douglas, dear. Uh, yes. Uh, have you found him yet? Uh, no, no. Are you the girl who gave us the photograph? Oh, that's right. I'm Barbara McPhail. We, well, we're friends. Close friends? I, I like him. He's, 
Oh, he's just not the type, Chief Inspector. Well, what? Mrs. Humby's dead. People here are, well, putting two and two together. But you don't believe it. I know him, Chief Inspector. Well, this is Mr. Greenlaw's office. Ah, oh, Chief Inspector. Thanks, Barbara, that's all. Yes, sir. It's good of you to see me, Mr. Greenlaw. Murder apart, I can think of 3,000 good reasons, Chief Inspector. <laughs> uh, sit down. Thanks. We have met before, about a year ago, just oh. for a moment or two. You gave a talk on office security to the local business club. Ah. I remember the talk. <laughs> well, uh, how can I help? Can you uh, identify these? Hmm? Oh, well, yes, that's one of our bank bags. Empty now. And these withdrawal slips are ours. Where'd you get them? And Frank Humby's flat. I see. Did young D.L. kill Mrs. Humby? Well, let's say he's on the list of starters. What can you tell me about D.L.? Mm, he's been here about four months. An invoice clerk on the export side. Sometimes he uh, helped out the cashier, Mr. O'Dell. Do you do much export business? Do we? <laughs> Chief Inspector. Never tried Glenort whiskey liqueur. <laughs> A couple of times. It's pricey. Not by American standards. We can't ship enough of it. Of course, we are one of the small names in the whiskey liqueur trade, but we're growing all right. You're not distillers. No, 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 no. Look, we're compounders. We buy in straight, ordinary whiskey in bulk. Then we add our own syrups, things like citronella and aniseed, mint, juniper. <laughs> There's a long list. Each compounder has his own recipe. Which he keeps secret. You guard it everywhere you know. But your liqueur whiskey recipe wasn't uh, in the same. You've got the term wrong, Chief Inspector. Mm -hmm. Liqueur whiskey is a trade name for very old, mature whiskey. Nothing added. It could be 20 years old. You don't want it too much older. I once tasted a bottle of a 100-year-old. <laughs> it was like paint thinner. Yeah. Whiskey liqueur, that's our business. Yeah, I'll uh, remember that. Let's get back to D.O. Did he have a key to the door between your warehouse and the office? Yes. There's only the one door, and only people who have to work between the two places have keys. I uh, got the idea from your talk at the business club. What do you know about the money? Well, wages drawn every week from the bank, plus some money I needed for a cash transaction. He knew all right. I sent him along with Mr. O'Dell to the bank to collect it. Uh, excuse me. Yes, yes. yes Barbara? Uh, Mr. Kelso to see you, Mr. Greenlaw. Oh, um, all right. I'll ask him to come through. Chief Inspector, I'm sorry. It's a customs and excise man I've just got to see. Is there anything else you need? Well, if I could talk to your cashier and maybe have a look over your warehouse. No problem. Greta O'Dell's in the office now. Come in, John. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. John Kelso, Customs and Excise, Chief Inspector Thane, Police. Mr. Kelso. Very glad to meet you, Chief Inspector. Uh, but um, I, I can come back. Oh, I'm just going, Mr. Kelso. I'm getting the guided tour. That's the uh, compounding vats, right, Mr. Dell? Right. Each holds a thousand gallons. We don't pretend to be a big firm, but we're doing all right. Uh, Chief Inspector, you said you had some questions. Yes, yes, I have. Douglas Dell first. When he went with you to the bank, did he seem nervous or excited in any way? No, but he wasn't the talkative type. Now, how long did you know there would be more money than usual to collect? Several days. And, you... and before you ask, yes, I did make a joke about it to him. It was damn stupid, looking back. Looking back's always easy. Did Mrs. Humby ever come here? Just once, I think. Frank, her husband was off sick. She came to collect his wages. Did people here know Humby had a record? Yes. At least George Greenlaw and I did, but he was a good worker. We, well, we trusted him. Mm -hmm. Wait a moment. Ed, uh, over here. Can you spare a moment? All right, Mr. Dell. Ed, you was our foreman. Frank Humby worked directly under him. Oh. There's something wrong, Mr. Dell. Ed, the chief inspector wants to know about Frank Humby. Well, uh, I didn't hire him. Well, what was he like to work with? Stubborn. He did his work, but he wasn't exactly friendly. Except perhaps with Douglas Dio. Well, they talked now and again. I'm kept too damn busy to watch all that goes on. What about Humby's last delivery run? Did he complete that? Oh, first thing I checked when I heard he'd been arrested. He did. A hundred cases of bottles consigned to Hamburg delivered to Leith Docks. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, not for now. I'm due at Frank Humby's flat. But I may be back. Oh, any time, Chief Inspector. You've got Humby. Now I'd like to see you get this little muttering basket deal. Uh, all of us would. Uh, 
Oh, it's just you calling. I thought it might be someone important. Like the milkman. Is Humby still here? Uh, DC Beach is going around the flat with him. Well, anything fresh with you? Nothing spectacular, Phil. I looked in at headquarters on my way here. And? Oh, I was lucky. Buddha Ilford had been called to see the chief constable. That'll be another time. Unfortunately. But the PM results through. No surprises. Gene Humby was coshed, then manually suffocated. Approximate time of death, 10.15 p.m. Well, no. That's interesting. Oh, why? Wait till I close the running door. Right. While I was bringing Humby here from prison, Beach took another prowl around the neighbours. He dug up something that ties in. Go on. A girl. Seventeen in the world's shortest miniskirt. Well, that's Beach, all right. No, I'm serious. This girl and her boyfriend were up on the roof of this block last night. There's a, a sort of balcony bit, private, for an aching session. There's always somewhere. And? Well, they were in a dark corner and uh, busy at it. Look. Then they realised they weren't alone. Another couple had come up. Phil, She says I... a woman with dark hair, a white raincoat and a good figure. The man was, well, she can't remember. But she'd never seen them before. She says they weren't local and they left the balcony just before ten. She doesn't think they noticed there was anyone else on the balcony. Just before ten? Mm. Well, it's possible. If they found Jean Humby was out and wanted to wait for her without being seen... Aye, that's what I thought. Okay, Humby. Oh, here's, here's Humby. All right, Humby. Oh, uh, uh, hello, sir. Beach. Hello, Frank. Hi. Uh, he says nothing seems to be missing, sir. You sure, Frank? I'm sure. Except the money. Frank, how many people knew about the Glen Alt robbery? My wife didn't, if that's what you mean. Not even where you'd hid the money? No, damn you. Well, who else, Frank? Your wife's dead and, well, you've seen the rest. Who else? Just D.L. You haven't got him yet, have you? Can you tell us where to look? No. Do you think I'd stand here and keep my mouth shut now? I don't know, Frank. Oh, your daughter's on her way to Glasgow. Joe O'Brien contacted her. Agnes? Hmm. Look, look I, I don't want to see her. But she's your daughter. She's not to get involved. She's just a kid. If you want to do me any kind of favour, keep her out of this. We'll try. If that's what you want. It is. All right, Beach. Take him back to Berlin. Uh, and get a receipt. One prisoner returned. If we don't stick to the routine, then headquarters. Uh, Start moaning. All right, sir. Okay, come on, Humby. Serial message number 22, timed 1, 2, 4, 5 hours. Special search requested for a very... Constable Beach. Sir? Registration... Uh, turn that damn thing down. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, I didn't know you were back, sir. I could have crept in and still in a flaming office from under you. Any messages for me? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Sergeant McLeod phoned in. Well? He said to tell you that uh, Joe Bryan seems to have vanished. Damn. And, uh, oh, well, uh, here's the rest of it, sir. I, I typed it out for you. No, thanks. Look, f uh, find some tea and sandwiches for two. Inspector Moss and myself. Uh, yes, sir. Um, what, what kind of sandwiches, sir? Oh, anything short of old boots. I'll be in my office. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, right away, sir. Phil. Yes? Come on through. I read you are. Well, what's up now? Uncle Joe O'Brien. McLeod says he's scarpered. O'Brien? Oh, uh, somebody phoned that builder till he runs and he just took off. What else does Mike say? Wait a minute. I haven't read this through. Ah, uh, well, most of it's Gene Humby. He's still raking round. So far he's found a taxi driver who drove her out from the city last night. Home? No, she paid him off a couple of streets shorter gradient dead. It's about 9.30. Ah. She was killed in the flat less than an hour later. Mm. After phoning O'Brien and telling him to come round. Now it looks as though a man and a woman were waiting for her. But why didn't she take the taxi all the way home? Well, that's what Mac's trying to find out now. Phil, we're going to have to find Joe O'Brien. Aye, but how? Oh, I'll get it. <clears throat> Thane? Ah, oh, Chief Inspector, it's George Greenlaw here at Glenault. Yes, Mr. Greenlaw. Is something wrong? No, but I've just seen our night watch. He tells me Mrs. Humby turned up at our warehouse about nine last night. Oh, we didn't know that. Uh, well, what did she want? Barbara MacPhail's home address. <sighs> the watchman refused, of course. Barbara MacPhail? Uh, does she know about this? Not yet. Uh, keep it that way. If you say so, though, well, I can't see her really being involved, can you? Anything's possible, I suppose. Mr. Greenlow, while we're talking, uh, tell me, how much pilfering goes on at your plant? That is stuff. A few bottles now and again, I suppose. Dale and Humby weren't robbing us by installments, if that's what you want. Well, thanks for calling. 
Any time, Chief Inspector. Bye. What was that about? George Greenlaw, the Glenort boss. Mm -hmm. Gene Humby was out looking for D.L.'s girlfriend. Oh. Any chance D.L. and his girlfriend were out looking for Gene mm -hmm. Humby? She's a nice kid, Phil. I know the worst. Phil, the sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Spoil yourself. Have them all. What? Well, I'm going out for lunch after all, and I'm inviting a certain customs man to join me. A customs man? Why? Just a notion. I think I'd like to know more about this Glen Alt outfit. A nice place you picked, Chief Inspector. I've never eaten here before. Well, believe me, I only use it when I want a favor from someone. Yes, yeah, salt. Uh, thanks. Mm, a favor from me? Well, let's say from customs and excise. For our mutual benefit. Mm hmm. Mr. Kelso, you're a customs and excise surveyor, which means, in some ways, you've more powers than a plain, ordinary cop. Well, it's nice of you to say so. For instance, you can demand or force entry into a house or building and search it without having to worry about a warrant. Hmm, in the course of duty, yes, but without adequate reason, no. Well, I wouldn't ask you without giving you adequate reason. I see. Uh, pass the butter, will you? Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. <coughs> This, uh, this Glen Alt whiskey liqueur outfit. I'm interested in them. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, um, what whiskey means to customs and excise. Over 300 million pounds a year in collected duty. Buy a bottle in Britain and at least three quarters of what you pay is tax. I know, it's a crime. It's one of the biggest single sources of internal revenue in this country. Mm -hmm. So, you take distilleries. There's a customs man at every one. Living on the premises, he holds all the keys, and he has to know what happens to every drop of whiskey produced. You're thorough. So, what about Glen Alt? Safe breaking, murder? Mm, not my territory, sorry. Glen Alt's an old firm that had to be sold for death duties a couple of years back, and that's when Greenlaw's company took over. Before that, Greenlaw managed a distillery. He's done quite well. How close an eye do you keep on the firm? Not particularly close. The rules say duty has to be paid before whiskey is used in compounding. Duty is what we're interested in. Then the secret recipe takes over. Secret? No, oh, no, that's publicity stuff. Any laboratory can crack a recipe. We know what's in Glen Alt whiskey liqueur. So do their competitors and vice versa. This duty business, I thought export sales were duty free. Mm, they are, but we refund only after we've seen the shipments leave. And we carry out warehouse inspections all the time to make sure everything's in order. And is everything in order? At Glenold? I'd stake my pension on it against... Well, against this excellent meal, Chief Inspector. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, Sergeant. Chief Superintendent Ilford's expecting me. Uh, he mentioned it, sir. He uh, felt she must have been delayed. Uh, thanks for the warning. He's free now. Thanks. Come. Ah, Thane. Enjoy your lunch? Yes, sir. It seems to have been a lengthy one. Well, close the door and sit down. Sir. Ah. A safe breaking and a murder. Thane, without your mill side division, my job as head of CID would be a damned sight easier. I know what you mean, sir. I wonder. Look at this desk. I'm not a policeman anymore. However, I've read your reports. There's a certain reticence about them, unlike your usual positive style. Well, that's how I feel about it, sir. One dead, two missing. Well, uh, two unavailable, at any rate. D.L., your chief suspect, and this, uh, Uncle Joe. Any chance of a link between them? I doubt it, sir. And this uh, mention of the MacPhail girl? Oh, I don't know, sir. What are you doing about that? Well, just in case she and D.L. were the couple seen on the balcony before Mrs. Humby was killed. That's what I had in mind. This local girl and boyfriend will have them in an observation van outside the Glen Alt offices when Barbara MacPhail leaves this evening. Good. How's Humby himself reacting to it? Shocked. There's something else, too. Well, I'd say deeper. Remorse? Mm. Probably blames himself for his wife's death, with reason. 
Well, don't look for any help from the Scientific Bureau. Dan Lawrence says they've drawn a blank so far. And, uh, keep me in the picture, thing. Of course, sir, of course, sir. Mill Side Division strikes again. Why couldn't they have built Millside in Edinburgh? Or anywhere but here. Well, here you are again. The Glen Old offices. Uh, want me to come with you, Colin? No, uh, just give me that again. Uh, Registered of Scottish companies. Uh, well, uh, Glen Old is listed with a nominal share capital of £20,000. Only three director shareholders, uh, George Greenlaw, Greta Adell... And a chartered accountant called Jimison Roth. Aye, most of them have one, sir. What's that, Erickson? An accountant, sir. Oh. I forgot with a driver who's moving into the legal profession. Uh, the accountant usually is a front man for some bank or outside interests. He just does what they tell him. You're a little mine of information, aren't you? Any time I can help the inspector. Uh, look, Phil, organise the observation of our routine. On Barbara McPhail? On the lot of them here. Uh, stay with it. Then call me back at Millside. Uh, right. Observation. Ah, well, it's time I had a rest. Oh, back again, Chief Inspector. Oh, well, Mr. Greenlaw's out, I'm afraid. That's all right, Barbara. I wanted a word with you. Oh? What about? Did you ever meet Mrs. Humby? Oh, yes. Oh, just once, though. She came to the office to collect Frank Humby's wages. He was off sick. How well did you know Frank Humby? Oh, he was just one of the drivers. I, I spoke to him now and again. I see. Barbara, do you mind telling me your movements after work for the last couple of nights? Oh, Barbara, I'd ask him why first. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Riddell. I thought I heard someone out here. Barbara? Uh, yes, Miss Riddell? There are some questions you don't answer without a lawyer in your oh, handbag. Thanks, but I don't mind. Well? Well, I share a flat with a girlfriend, and we were there together all Wednesday evening. That's our wash and iron night. And last night? I, I was out alone. I, I was looking for Douglas. Douglas Dio. Where? Oh, places we'd been, just in case he'd show up. But he didn't. What time did you get home? Mm, after 11. I can't be sure. But my flatmate was in when I got back. Well, uh, thanks, Barbara. We'll want to check, but that's all for now. Better go while you've got the chance, girl. There's some invoices waiting to be filed on my desk. Mm, I'll do that. Goodbye, Chief Inspector. Uh, goodbye, Barbara. You practically scared her to death. But not you. I've been around a little longer than she has. And now you're a company director, Miss Riddell. So you've been checking on me, too? On everyone, but the office cat. It's routine. Famous last words. Anything else you want while you're here? I'd like to see your foreman again. Ed Yule. Oh, sorry. He's out on a delivery run. He won't be back till late. Well, there's no hurry. How long has he been with you? Since we started. He worked with George when George managed a distillery. He joined us when we set up. And you, Miss Riddell? Simple. George is an old friend. We got together and decided to buy this business, then floated the extra money we needed from a finance house. Anything else? No, nothing. A pity. I'd have liked to hear something about you for a change, Chief Inspector. You interest me. You really do. Oh, Mary, oh. your loving, absent husband. Hello, Colin. Uh, dare I ask when you're coming home? I don't know, Mary. Not till later. Maybe not at all. The papers say there should be an early arrest. I wish they were right. How are things? Oh, I'm leading my usual riotous life. Uh -huh. Baking. It was meant to be a layer cake, but it turned out a disaster. A new recipe? No, it was the same damn baking powder. A new brand. Well, it was the same, but... Oh, well, it must have been different, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Vaguely. <laughs> anyway, I'll uh, try and call back. Huh? All right, Colin. Bye. Bye, Mary. Layer cake. Uh, what now? Yep. Uh, there's a Miss Humby out here, sir. Miss Agnes Humby. Uh, she'd like to see you. Oh, yes, of course. Show him, please. Right, sir. Humby's daughter. Mm -hmm. oh, well, let's get it over with. Come. Uh, Miss Humby, sir. Thanks, Beach. Sir. Uh, Miss Humby, I'm Chief Inspector Thing. Chief Inspector? I'm sorry we have to meet under these circumstances. It's not your fault, is it? No, no. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mr. Thane, one of your police cars met me at the airport and, and took me out to the prison. I thought that might make it easier. It did. 
But my father wouldn't see me. He just wouldn't. Well, why not? Well, if he doesn't want to, we can't make him. That's not what I asked. He said he just didn't want you to get involved, Agnes. You should have thought about that for my mother, too. I, I, I know how you feel, Agnes. Did your mother let you know he'd been arrested? No. She hadn't much time, had she? Do you know who killed her? Not yet. Well, my father did as all he gets. That's why I want to see him. To tell him he can rot in jail as far as I'm concerned. I loved my mother. Agnes, your mother stuck by him. And ended up dead. Well, if you need me, I'll be staying with my Uncle Jim. Oh, well, uh, he's gone out of town, Agnes. In fact, we're looking for him. You mean he's keeping out of the way? <laughs> That's my Uncle Joe. Well, I can still use his place. I've got a key. Uh, Chief Inspector. Yes? I want to ask you about the funeral. Of course. Goodbye, Miss Hamlet. Goodbye. Then that's over. Oh, damn. What now? Thane? It's Sergeant McLeod, sir. Oh, Mac. I'd almost forgotten you existed. You got anything? Aye, I think so, sir. You know how I've been trying to find out what Mrs. Humby was doing that night? Yes, go on. Well, I think the answer might be an old rascal called Peaky Rafferty. He sells papers just about where Mrs. Humby left that taxi. And what about him? Well, he just hasn't shown up at his stands today, sir. I thought... Uh, you thought right. Where does he live? Cannon Street, sir. Number 142. Get straight round there, Mac. Now, I'll get a car and come straight up. Right, sir. Right. <clears throat> 142 Cannon Street. 142 Cannon Street, sir. Thanks, Erickson. Keep an ear on that radio. Right, sir. What? Hello, son. What are you doing here? Playing. Playing what? Just playing. Uh, does uh, Mr. Rafferty stay here? You mean Peaky Rafferty? Mm. Aye. Why not left, Mr. Thanks. Master! What? You from the bus? Yes, I suppose I am. Why? Who else comes to see Peaky? Well, I wouldn't know. One up left. Uh, here we are. Anyone in? Sergeant McLeod? Mac. Mac, where are you? In, in here, sir. Mac, what the hell happened? Sir, I... Look, I'll give you a hand up. Uh, no, no, no. No, just give me a minute, sir. Of course. Uh, uh, take it easy. Oh, my head. I walked in here and, and somebody thumped me. Hey, mister. What's wrong, Will? What are you doing in here? I came to see. Did you know well? There's something like that. Look, son... Run downstairs. Tell the man in the police car to get up here. Who says? You'll know. Now move. All right, mister. Now, uh, Mac, uh, tell it again. You got here. What about the door? Well, it was closed, but it wasn't locked. Anyway, the lock, it's, it's the kind you could open with a strip of celluloid and a, well, a deep breath. And I know someone who could do just that. Then... That's about it, sir. I came in and... and thump. How long ago? Oh, I don't know, sir. Maybe five minutes. Maybe more. You worried me, sir? Yes, sir. Oh, he's all right. Give me a hand up at him. Right, sir. Come on, sir. Is he oh. all right now, mister? Uh, yes. Uh, are you back again? Oh. I might be a flesh when I grow up, but a real one in uniform. Uh, wait a minute, son. When you were playing down there, did you see anyone leave here? They come down the stairs, I mean. No. I was playing down the street, mister. That big boy chased me. I wonder where Robert is now. I know. Eh? Huh? Where? My master says he's in the central police pokey. He got arrested for being drunk last night. She says Peaky drinks too much. Thanks, sir. Uh, here, here. Uh, take this and ah. buy yourself some sweet, eh? Ah, here. Thanks, mister. Two pound or twenty days. That's what I got, Mr. Thane. 
Just for a wee bit of singing and shouting. The police report says you were stoned. Me? Ah, a wee bit, maybe. Uh -huh. uh, what brings a CID big shot visiting me in a cell, eh? Do you know Frank Humby? Aye, sure. Did you see Mrs. Humby last night? Aye, the twice. Yeah, she'll have told you. She's dead, Peaky. She was murdered last night. God, she was... Oh, she was a decent woman, that one. Uh, nobody told me. Uh, you don't get the newspapers in here, you know. Not that often, uh, anyway. Peaky, I'm in a hurry. When did you see her? Uh, uh, she came up to my house about six last night. Mm -hmm. M murdered. Uh, uh, and the second time? Ah, well... I was at my paper pitch in Stanford Avenue. She passed me in a taxi, and then a taxi stopped, and she walked back to talk to me again. Said she wanted to make sure she had everything right. Everything about what? About me seeing Frank the night before he was lifted for the robbery job, Mr. Fee. And when was that? Uh, we bit after midnight. He walked up and bought a paper from an early edition with the uh, dug results. Did he say where he'd been? Hey, no, and I didn't ask. Hey, not Frank, but... Uh, well? Well, I heard a car draw up just before he appeared there. Uh, then it drove past a wee black car with a woman driving it. If Frank had been out with some woman his wife didn't know about, that was none of my business. But you told Mrs. Humby? Ah, well, she gave me a couple of quid. Mm -hmm. She said it was important, might get him out of the jail. Can you describe the woman in the car? Not very well. Uh, she had dark hair, kind of long, I think it was. All right, Picky. Now, the last question. Why did Jean Humby come to see you? Well, she remembered Frank coming in with the newspaper and telling her he'd got it from me. I see. Uh, Mr. Thane, hmm? any chance you pay my fine? Uh, it's only a couple of quid. Picky, you're safer where you are. Believe me. Ah, uh, well, I suppose the meals are regular. Millside CID, Chief Inspector Thane's office. Uh, no, this is Inspector Moss. Uh, look, call back, will you? We're busy right now. Anything? Oh, nothing that matters, Colin. Headquarters wanting some statistics. Statistics, statistics. Are we cops or computers? Well, they can wait for them. All right, Dan. What's so important you came out here? The Scientific Bureau tramps again. Mm -hmm. We've been late, maybe, but... Uh... Better late than never, we know. Yeah, you're also to stay quiet, so... Uh, now, listen, both of you. Remember how the back was off that stereo at Humby's flat? Well, we found the empty bank bag. Right. Well, look at these. These are the screws that were removed from it. Fair enough. Right. So? That's a rented stereo. The rental firms don't like customers poking around inside the guts of their equipment. So a good few of them always put a wee dab of red paint on each screw head at the back, like a seal. If the paint's disturbed, they know someone's been at it. I don't follow you, Dad. You will. These screws have only one set of markings. Even under an ordinary jeweler's glass, there's no mistake. It was a small bladed screwdriver badly worn on one shoulder. Find me that screwdriver. It's as good as a fingerprint. I see. Do you? Can you tell me how the devil the money got inside the set in the first place? And the back was only taken off once? Once. Once. Well, call me. You don't look too surprised. I don't think I am, Dan. Hmm? See, it ties in. Another fake. A fake? Humby framed himself for robbery, and we fell for it. He framed himself to cover up something bigger. And the only thing that went wrong was that Gene Humby got in the way after he was arrested. Well, I've done my wee bit. Dan, I go back. Oh, thanks, Dan. Thanks a lot. Any time. Miracles performed twice daily. Aye, yeah, that'll be right. Colin, what the hell's going on? Well, I'm beginning to get an idea. It's just a beginning, Phil. Well, I can tell you this much. These two youngsters I had in the observation van didn't identify anyone. And Barbara McPhail walked straight past us. But there's been a dark-haired woman turning up all through this, Phil. Yeah, and Greta Rodell's a blonde. Whoever she is, that woman remembered seeing Picky Rafferty. If he hadn't got drunk and been arrested... We could have another body in our hands, eh? Yeah, well, we nearly did. Mark took a real clout. Uh, yes. yes. Sir, uh, Agnes Humby's back. She's, uh, she's got Joe Bryan with her, sir. Oh, Bryan? Send them right in. Right, sir. Uncle Joe. First he vanishes, then he pops back up. To... What the hell has he been? Come in. Uh, 
Same here, please, Miss Humby. You too, O'Brien. Thanks, Beach. That's up. Well, now, this is a surprise. Uh, for me too, Chief Inspector. I brought him, Mr. Thing. He's got something to tell you, haven't you, Uncle Joe? Oh, now, look, lass. Uh, Uncle I don't Joe. Sit down, both of you. Hill. Uh, sure. Uh, cheers. Here you are. Thanks. Uh, O'Brien, do you know there are police looking for you over half the country? I, I never thought he never be. does. But he turned up about half an hour ago, and when I found out where he's been... Yeah, I should have kept my mouth shut. That would have made you an even bigger fool. My mother was your sister, wasn't she? Yes, but... Where I were you, O'Brien? And I want it straight. Well, Aberfoyle. Aber... It's out in the country. About 30 miles from oh, here. I know where it is. Tourist land. But what were you doing there? He was at a bank, making sure my loving father's money was safe. O'Brien? Well, look, I've done nothing wrong, Mr. Payne. Just tell it. What kind of racket is Frank Humby involved in? I don't know, uh... I just know about the money he's been making. And, and that's just because he wanted to be sure there was always someone on the outside who could look after Jean and we Agnes here. I wouldn't touch his money. My mother's dead. Uh, easy, Miss Humby. How much money is there, Joe? Uh, about 7,000 quid. It's in a bank at Aberfoyle. Frank opened an account there about a year back. He said he was a salesman <laughs> and gave my address. He made it so I was authorised to draw cash at any time. How much did you get paid? I did it for free, Mr. Oh. Well, I mean, nearly for free. And why the disappearing act? Well, I phoned the bank to make sure there'd be no snacks here yeah, about drawing the money, I mean. And I didn't tell them Frank was inside, of course. Uh, the manager phoned back to say it was OK, but I'd need to sign a couple more forms and get a checkbook. Uh, and that's why I nipped up there. Agnes, I'm glad you got him here. Oh, I'm almost past caring. But where did my father get £7,000? Good question. Well, Uncle Joe? Uh, no, all at once. Uh, but it came steady, I know that. Why Aberfoyle? Well, he, he said it was handy. He was out there a lot, and it was well clear of the city. When he went to Aberfoyle, what did he do, apart from put money in the bank? I don't know. Well, except, well, once when he had a bucket in him, he, he told me about a place there, a, a sort of big swamp. Oh, nasty bit of sound of it. Um, fl Flanders Moss, I think he called it. He said every time he had to go there, I gave him a shivers. Flanders Moss. All right, Agnes. Yes? Take him home and keep him there. Uh, wait a minute. There'll we'll be a cop me. outside to make sure you don't leave, O'Brien. Uh, all right. Come on, Uncle Joe. I don't know all that fuss is about. I wish I did too, Colin. Uh, know what it's all about, I mean, but... I'm beginning to get a good idea. And I don't like it. We've a fake robbery. A man in jail waiting trial for that robbery who has a cast-iron alibi but won't use it. His wife finds out... And tells someone so she gets killed. But, Humby... There's only one reason I can think of strong enough to keep him quiet. Yes. Murder. Another murder. Douglas D.L. Well, that's how I see it, Phil. Humby daren't talk because that robbery charge is his alibi for something else. And this Flanders Moss place... Yeah, named after you. <laughs> Phil... Get the car out front of me. Ah, right. I'll phone the county police. We'll need some kind of a guide. Then I have two other calls to make to headquarters and to customs and excise. We are going to need help on this. Help all round. Good evening, sir. Sergeant Davis, County Police. Sergeant. And this is Alistair McSaw. Aye. Uh -huh. You wanted someone who knows this bog land. Well, there's none better. Uh, well, I hope you're right. Uh, is that it? Aye, uh -huh, that's it. One big peat bog. Thousands of acres of it. How well do you know it, Alistair? Oh, I earn my living in there. I'm a vermin trapper for the Forestry Commission. Uh -huh. They're, uh, they're reclaiming a lot of the land. Are there many paths across the bog land? Aye, uh, a few. And if you go off them? Oh, then you're in trouble. I've seen a deer sucked under before now. Uh, you've been told what we're after. Aye, aye. aye yeah. uh, and uh, I think I maybe know where to look. Uh, I tend to my traps at night, Chief Inspector. Now, there was a car out along the Kelpie path a couple of nights back. Uh, only a damned fool or somebody who knows his place would drive there. You'll take us. Aye. Uh, we walk to here. Uh, there's a shortcut way. Wait till we get these welly boots on. Uh, and both of you... You stay close, you understand? We'll be breathing down your neck, believe me. Is it uh, 
much further, Alistair. No, no. no, no. Careful, Lou. Damn! Get up! I've got you! Yeah. Oh, uh, I warned you. You're calling that stuff's like porridge. Alistair. Now, there's the kelpie path. Uh, see where that high myrtle shows a break. I will be there in a moment. Chief Inspector. Yes? Look. Tire marks. Uh, here on the soft shoulder. No, no. Stay where you are. Uh, the tire marks stop here. Well, if there's any searching to be done off the path, I'll do it. Oh, he's right, sir. It may look the same, but it's different just a yard or so off this path. Different and dangerous. Yes, Sergeant. Aye, Alistair. Let's have these probing rods you're carrying. Oh, here we are. Uh, well, this could take a wee while, I warn you. How long did it take, then? About an hour, sir. And it's DL, all right. We'll have to wait for the post-mortem, but it looks like he was killed the same way as Gene Humby. And now it's over to customs and excise, Mr. Kelso. We're ready, Thane. Chief Superintendent Ilford didn't waste time getting things organized. That's what our scientific bureau is for, Mr. Kelso. Superintendent Lawrence has all you asked for waiting this way. Now, is everybody here now? Yes. You can go ahead, Dan. Mr. Kelso, you'd better do the explaining. In a moment... Now just let me check. Yes, uh, Yes, that's uh, fine. Well, uh, keep it simple, will you, Mr. Kelso? I'll try. Uh, gentlemen, uh, what we have here is a gas chromatography unit. Briefly, it gives an infinitely fine detailed analysis of any substance we can convert to liquid form. The readings tell us in graph form the chemical ingredients and the quantities present. Uh, you follow me? So far, I think. Good. We compare the readings against known standards, and we can tell exactly what is in anything. You should try it on the canteen sausages. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Kelsey. Try it. Now, take whiskey. Ah, uh, Superintendent Lawrence and I tried a little party trick before you got here, Thane. He drank a glass of whiskey. I took a sample of his breath afterwards. And he damned well identified the brand from the fumes. Oh, I'll volunteer for that one any time. You mean it's positive? Absolutely positive. Whiskey is quite simple, Chief Inspector. What makes one whiskey different from another is the tiny aromatics and chemical traces from the water, the grain, the distiller's plant, any number of things. Yes, we understand all that. The first sample, then. Bulk whiskey from the Brannock distillery. According to our records, all whiskey used by the Glen Alt Company to make their whiskey liqueur is bought from Brannock distillery. Uh, this is a customs and excise sample. Uh, Superintendent? Going through now. Right. There's your graph. Brannock Distillery. Now, Glen Alt whiskey liqueur. The graph will be different, I warn you, because of the essences they use. But uh, even so, uh, Superintendent? Glen Alt, going through now. There's your second graph. Now, side by side. Thane, uh, mm -hmm. and you, Inspector Moss, uh, look at them closer. Yeah. They're different, all right. Mm -hmm. Two sets of wiggly lines. Uh, sorry, that's all I see. Ah, yes, but notice this high peak in the Brannock sample. Uh -huh. It should be in the Glen Alt sample, but it isn't. Yeah. It maybe it just got lost. I uh, know. Another whiskey was used. One customs don't know about, and legally that is impossible. Then your hunch was right, Thane. Stolen whiskey. Well, that's how I see it, sir. What gave you the idea? Well, my wife baked a cake, sir. She used the wrong baking powder. It was the same, but different. Then, well, someone said pretty much the same thing about the bogland. I won't claim to follow you, but... Uh, stolen whiskey. Now we're getting somewhere. But from the customs viewpoint, it's impossible. We take every precaution. We check their export shipments. I know the Glen Old Company are still buying their usual supplies from the Brannock Distillery. Customs That's check their export shipments, yes. Because you've got to refund them any duty paid. But what's to stop them operating a legitimate export trade with legitimate stock, but boosting their home market sales with stolen liquor? Is it possible, Mr. Kelso? Well, with some clever bookkeeping, yes, I suppose so. 
Robbery, fraud, and tax evasion. Uh, but would it be worth murder? Uh, two murders. Uh, Mr. Kelso, suppose I stole a lorry load of whiskey. How much money would be involved? Well, let me see. Say, 30 casks, each 100 gallons. Well, I'd have to work it out. Um, say, a duty-paid value of around 40,000 pounds. For just one lorry load. Satisfied, Phil? How many big whiskey thefts have there been recently? Quite a number. I'm having a full list prepared. But we've looked for one. The one you suggested, Thane. Mm -hmm. Three years ago, a lorry load of whiskey was hijacked and never found. The driver wasn't suspected at the time. His name was Edward Yule. And the distillery, sir? The one George Greenlaw was managing. And Yule is now foreman with Greenlaw at Glenalt. So that's how they got the stake to set up in business, eh? Chief Superintendent, I, uh, I think there's something I'd better tell you. Yes? Well, I was expecting a visitor this afternoon. Uh, a man telephoned a few days ago. He wouldn't give his name, but he said he could give me information about an evasion of excise duty on whiskey. He wanted to know if there would be a reward, and he wanted a guarantee we wouldn't reveal where the information came from. Can you do that? Yes, on both counts. He said he needed another day or two, and then he'd bring the proof. And that was to be this afternoon. Well, he didn't show up. It could have been a hoax, I suppose, but... Uh... It could have been Douglas Deere. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, it was a young man's voice. Ah, well, now we can guess why he was killed, eh? Same. I want you to have another try at Frank Humby in the morning. I don't see us getting much there, sir. Agreed, but do it anyway. Then, this dark-haired woman we've heard about. You rule out Barbara MacPhail. Absolutely, sir. And the Riddell woman is a blonde. They're probably out of a bottle. See. Hey, what, what about a wig? Why not? Does she own a car? I think so. We've some other checking to do. That bank at Aberfoyle, for instance. Uh, there's a way I can help, too. I could uh, find out quite easily about stocks of bottles, materials like essences, uh, how much they've bought in. Then compare it with how much legitimate production the Glen Oak plant should have had. You can help more than that, Mr. Kelso. How? Well, first, like the rest of us, you'll say nothing about Dale's body being found. Well, of course. Anything else I can do? Yes. But it means you're going to be staying up late. Thane, I still don't know I like this. It's simple. The Glen Oak warehouse is round the corner. Customs and excise have the power to force entry and search any building without a warrant. We haven't. I know. Uh, Mr. But... Kelso, don't you want to find if there's a damn great pile of stolen whiskey in there? Of course. Then let's get on with it. Ericsson, switch off. Sir. Kelso, did you bring that sampling kit? Yes, I've everything here. Ericsson, you know your part. Walk round to the main gate, shut up the watchman. I'm just a wandering uniform cop who'd like a cup of tea somewhere. And doesn't care if there's a war going on down the road. Just like natural, you'll do. But keep him occupied. We'll give you a couple of minutes, then we'll go in through the office door. How? Uh, these, Mr. Kelso. Mm -hmm. Skeleton keys. We, uh, we fell heir to them after an arrest last month. Right, Phil, we're in. Now lock it again. Aye. Kelso. Yes. Uh, wait till I get this torch going. That's unlocked, Colin. Right, Kelso, lead the way. Now, the door from here into the compounding plant. Along the corridor. Huh? What the hell are we all whispering for? This is legal, isn't it? Uh, look, look, just move, Phil. Come on, and keep those keys handy. Here we are. It's, it's locked. Oh, here we go again. Uh, open sesame. There are your casks, Kelso. Ah, let me check them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, these are the Brannock distillery casks, legitimate enough. Yeah, it depends what's in them, doesn't it? Oh, you mean they could have refilled them? Well, it would make sense. Well, I'm not suggesting the whole staff here on the crook. Well, I'll draw samples. Then can you check those vats for me? I want to know how much liqueur is ready for bottling. Yes, but I don't... Uh, Phil and I want to take a look around. All right. Just remember to come back, will you? What are we looking for? Another store, Phil. Mm. It should be somewhere near. Yeah, there's a, a sort of grill here, low down in the wall. 
Oh, it's just the size of an air vent. But from where? That's the outside wall. Unless Let's the... try it. Yeah, there's, there's another door along here. Yeah. All right, but go quietly. Erickson better be keeping that watchman busy. Nothing this side, Colin. Wait a minute. Hmm? Yes, here, yeah, Phil. Okay. What is it? Oh, that hatch marked maintenance only. Uh, it's, it's pretty rusty. Ah, uh, yes, but this padlock's well greased. See what you can do, Phil. Uh, okay. Ah, this this one, I think. Yes. Lift it now. <laughs> Torch, Phil. Keep it shady, Torch. Well, well, this is it, all right. <sighs> Eight casks. Uh, hold this hatch lid, Phil. Oh, right. I'll take a look at them. Uh, hey, hey, don't get stuck down there. Any names on them? Uh, hold on. Yes, this one's special, Kruachen. And the others, well, I think they're the same. Look, I'm coming back up. Yeah? <coughs> oh, right. What's that you got? Mud, Phil. They're covered in dried mud. Like they've been in a bog, you mean? Like they've been in a bog. Uh, There's some rubber tube and a hand pump down there, Phil. They can tap these casks from here and refill the legitimate casks through that grill. A little bit of weekend work will the stuff are away, eh? <laughs> Neat. Now what? Get Kelso over here. He can draw more of his samples. And then we'll get the hell out of it. It's fantastic. Once I've checked out these samples... Uh, there's something more important right now. You check those vats, or whatever they're called, mm -hmm. and you saw the casks. Mm -hmm. Now, this is Friday night. Have they enough whiskey in stock for normal production on Monday? Well, not really. Both vats are practically empty, and most of the casks are the same. They'll need a delivery from... From somewhere. Legitimate or on the crook. Or both, eh? Does the Glenalt plant operate on Saturdays? No, but the office is usually open. Good. I think I'll make a little call on them. Uh, you have to see Frank Humby, too, remember? Afterwards, Phil, he'll keep where he is. All right, Erickson. Sir? We're all going home for some sleep. Tomorrow could be a busy day. Uh, good morning, Glenort Distilleries. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, uh, hold on a moment, please, will you? Hello, Chief Inspector. I won't be a moment. No rush, Barbara. Uh, hello, Paula. Yes, just a moment and I'll connect you. There. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Busy? Oh, not on a Saturday. The office staff are only in for a couple of hours. Uh, Chief Inspector, have you any news of Douglas yet? Uh, no. Uh, no, we haven't, Barbara, not yet. Oh. Are you on your own, Barbara? Yes, everybody else is having their coffee break just ah. now. Except, well, I, I think Mr. Greenlaw may be back in a couple of minutes. Barbara, we need your help. There's a chance you could help us prove young D.L. innocent when you do it. Oh, whatever you want, yes. For a start, how well do you get on with Greenlaw and Greta Riddell? All right, I suppose. Now, how have they been these last few days? Well, it's difficult. They both seemed edgy, I suppose is the word. Barbara, you're going to have to trust me on this, and I've got to trust you. Yes? That office switchboard... The rest of this morning, I want you to make a note of any calls made by Greenlaw, Greta, Adele, or Ed Yule. But, Chief Inspector... Don't take any risks. But if you can listen into their calls, do it. When you stop work, come straight to me. You mean you think they're involved? But then why did Douglas run away? There are some things I can't answer yet, Barbara. Did Douglas ever talk to you about the firm's account books? He never got near them. Greta Rodell just sat side all on her own. Always? Well, even when she was off ill with flu a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Greenlaw said he wasn't to touch them. But Douglas would still be left on his own. Oh, yes, more or less, anyway. Who's Greta Rodell's hairdresser? A hairdresser? Yes. I, I don't know, but I, I could try to find out. I'd be obliged. Tell you. Oh, like that. <coughs> well, you were going out to the prison to see Frank Humby next. That's right. Don't bother. Hmm? They found him dead in his cell this morning. He hanged himself. Yes. 
hanged himself, then. Well, there's no doubt why. No, I suppose there isn't, sir. But that's not the only reason I came over to Millside Division. The whole situation is in a, well, delicate stage. I want to be sure of what's happening. Here's the post-mortem report and that was Dale Cox. Oh, exactly the same as for the Humby woman. Yes, here's the summary. Uh, death due to asphyxia, small surface bruising, minute underskin hemorrhage around the mouth and nostrils. And a blow in the back of the head first. Uh -huh. Another butking. I just hope we can trust this MacPhail girl. She still doesn't know. That was my decision, sir. I'm glad it wasn't mine. Now, the bank could have a point. Aye, the county police took care of that, sir. Uh, Joe O'Brien's right. Humby's account with them is a cash balance of £7,000, plus a parcel Humby handed in late on Thursday afternoon. Well? Another 3000 in banknotes, sir. The money from the Glen Oak safe? We'll assume it was his fee for his part in taking care of DL. Paid in advance. What sort of watch are you keeping on these people, Fane? They're all under surveillance, sir. And if Kelso's calculations are right, they'll need to bring in fresh whiskey stocks this weekend. And that's when we clinch it, eh? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yep. Mr. Kelso from Customs and Excise, sir. All right, Mac. Ask him to come in. Sir. Talk of the devil. Burns. Sir? The deal's a war with the excise man. Kelso would want to check his tax returns first. Morning, Mr. Kelso. Come in. Morning. Oh, good morning, Chief Superintendent. Morning, Mr. Kelso. Thanks for your help last night. Well, this said about that. But it worked out. Yes, that's not why I came, then. I contacted the trade outlet I mentioned, bottle suppliers and essence suppliers. I thought you'd be interested in the results. We are. Balance them against the duty-paid whiskey stocks they're supposed to hold, and it looks as though Glen Alt has been producing at least one extra bottle of liqueur for every three we've known about. And that's being suitably conservative, of course. Of course. In cash terms? Well, calculating the whiskey at its duty-paid value and subtracting the probable cost of essence and manufacturing... Right. How much profit? £220,000 a year. Well, what happens now? We wait, Mr. Kelso, till I hear from someone who's helping us. And this time, I think I'd better be here on my own. did what you wanted, Mr. Fane. Though I felt a bit like Martha Hari, you know, spying. What did you find out? Well, about half an hour after you left, Mr. Greenlaw had a private meeting in his office with Mr. Odell. Uh, then he made a telephone call. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a number. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of those truck rental firms. He talked to them about a lorry that has to be ready for this evening. Good. Uh, this matters, Barbara. It matters a lot. I made another call after that to Ed Ewell. Uh, the warehouse people don't work on Saturdays. Can you remember exactly what he said? Oh, that's easy enough. He just said, Ed, we'll go ahead with the run as usual. He wanted to be at some place he called the Drove Track before dark. The Drove Track? Uh, just a minute, Barbara. Sir? Mac, tell Inspector Moss it's on for tonight. Some place called the Drove Track at dusk. He'll know what to do. Right, sir. Oh, and I found out about Gretchen O'Dell's hairdresser, Mr. Fane. His name is Bellini. It's a shop in the high street. One of the other girls knew. You've done well, Barbara. But what's it all about? I mean, how does all this help Douglas? Barbara, I think you've earned the right to be told. Told what? The truth, Barbara. The truth? Chief, Chief Inspector, something wrong. We know where Douglas is, Barbara. We uh, found him last night. He's dead, Barbara. Dead? Murdered. Like Jean Humby. Oh, no. Barbara, I said you could help him. I meant it. But this was the only way. You couldn't have done what you did this morning if you'd known the truth. Do you think Mr. Greenlaw and the other... Yes. Barbara, the best way people can help Douglas now is to put his killers where they belong, in a dock before a jury. I think I'd better go home, Mr. Fainer. I liked him a lot. Of course. There's a car waiting for you. A policewoman will go back with you just in case you need her. For anything, Barbara. Anything at all. You organize everything, don't you, Mr. Fane? Absolutely everything. Don't be in your usual flaming hurry, Eric. Time to spare. Right, sir. You had a rough from the sound of it. She had a rough, you mean? What a hell of a way to repair, Phil. Ah, it goes with a job. Come on, checklist type. Ah, right. Uh, 
The county police are waiting for us. I know this drove track place. It's, it's right in the heart of that damn bog land. We know Greenlaw and you will have collected that rental truck. Early. Oh, killing time, Phil. They won't want to be out there before dusk. Which leaves Greta Adele. Cloud and Beach will collect her own schedule. And her car. They know what to do. Collecting a woman. Oh, we've got to go back into that damn bog land again. Oh, here, I, I nearly forgot. What? Kelso, your customs pal, he'd phoned making noises about some spare whiskey samples. Said he couldn't find them. Put it in my desk. Hmm. Left them in the car last night. Well, he says he's enough for the checks, but he thinks the spares are lost. Have he? Well, we've arranged everything like you asked, Chief Inspector. I was relying on that, Sergeant. <laughs> we, we reckon to be upsides with most forces, sir. And, of course, um, Alistair McSorn came along. Oh, I'm grateful, Mr. McSorn. I wouldn't like to head into that stuff out there without a guide. Well, you could head in, Chief Inspector. If they're getting out again, it might be difficult. Uh, where's Inspector Moss? Uh, back at our car. Oh, the radio. Mm. Of course. Um, where's that map of yours, Alistair? Oh, uh, here. I'll, uh, I'll spread it out in this boulder. Uh, good. Yeah. good. Uh, now, sir, here's what's called the Drove Road. It just um, it comes to an end. Mm. There's one or two like it through Flanders Moss where somebody tried to build a new road but had to give up. It's, it's not wide mostly overgrown. And it's joined by a, a footpath. Um, ah, here. I see. So it's somewhere along that road. <laughs> Tracks are better one for a chief inspector. And I wouldn't worry about any other traffic. So once they're in, we've got them bottled. That's how we see it, sir. Ah, it'll stop somewhere along that distance. Is there anywhere they could load a truck without being seen? Aye, the far end. At this time of the year, the reeds and weeds are thick enough to make you think you were in the jungle. And high enough, too. Well, sir? Right. We let them get in, and then we block the track. But we're going to get them on foot. Yeah, but why not just drive up? I mean, they can't get away, except until they peat. And only a damn fool would try that. Well, a desperate one. I don't want to risk a manhunt. Will you take us in, Alistair? Oh, aye, aye. It'll be easier than the last time. Uh, most of the way, we'll use the footpath. Colin. Uh, over here, Phil. Uh, the truck's on its way, all right. The car trailing them just radioed. They've passed Albert Foyle heading straight for here. Then we'd better move. Back in there again. Ah, where's my welly boots? <laughs> uh, it's got its attraction, Inspector Moss. Uh, when you know it. I don't want to know it. Right now, I just want to go. Midges are eating me alive. The city blood's a sort of treat for them, sir. Uh, county comics we can do without, Sergeant. Yeah. Hey, your proper collar's stopped. Aye, but he's waving us to come on. Uh, there's the, the drove road, Chief Inspector. Now stay quiet and listen. Uh, aye, we're near them. Whatever they're doing. Right, we'll get closer. Now as silent as you can. Aye. All of you. Drone, quietly. Here. Just ahead. Aye. There's the truck. Tailboard down. Planks like a bridge up to it. There's green wall on that orange. Hey, who's his pal, you? The pulley chain goes into the scrub. Look, we'll get closer. Sergeant, you and McSorn ease round to the left. Aye, sir. Come on, Alistair. All right, Sergeant. Hurry, sir. I'll work you as fast as I can, Daddy. You'll have a fix of these cars. I know, and no. Just right. Start winding. Hey, look at that. Yeah, that's how they load, Phil. The casks are hidden in the scrub, and they winch them out and up. Neat. Hey, how much do these things roll? Kelso said a hundred gallons each. Mm, then they need that winch. No, no, wait. Yeah. While oh, they're getting it up to the tailboard. Now, Phil. Stay there, George. Keep winding. Okay, steady around. That's it. All right, Greenlaw, leave it at that. My God, it's thin. You too, you. Run for it, there, Sergeant. The sir. winch, Greenlaw. Watch that winch. The cast. The look, cast. Oh, George. My God, it took him with it. The thing's gone. Gone into that damned peat mud. Mm. 
Sergeant. Sergeant McLeod. Uh, Sarge, they're here. Right. You're going to have company, Miss Rodell. Better than yours, I hope. Don't get too close to those claws of hers, Beach. Oh, no, Sarge. Not after what she did to you. Next time I'll do it better. In you go, Greenlaw. Thanks very much. And now we're all together. Good. I thought you'd be here, Greta. You can even sit beside her. Thanks. If you're looking for you, Greta, don't. He had an accident. What kind of accident? A cask took him into the peat bog. How did you make out at Mr. Dale's flat, Sergeant? Reasonable, sir. Show him beach. Uh, there's this lot, sir. Mm. Uh, some business ledgers, so on. Uh, she had a safe built in behind the bathroom cabinet. Mm. Bank books, passports, money. The emergency fund, eh? Uh, this one, sir. Hmm? Oh, I see. So it's Mr. and Mrs. Greenlaw. It uh, kept things in the family. Quiet, George. What happened to your face, Mike? She Don't went for me when we were opening the bathroom cabinet. Well, this lot clinches it. You three and Frank Humby. Uh, you had a good run while it lasted. Well, what lasted? Oh, theft, fraud, evasion of duty. Words. What about proof? Greta, I have a feeling that after tonight, that's a formality. Theft, fraud, and evasion of duty. Well, what happens now, Chief Inspector? Last night we got young D.L.'s body out of Flanders Moss. Last night? But was it suicide? You know better. He was murdered. The same way as Jean Humby. Now, wait a minute. Then. With that kind of nonsense, we have a right to ask for a lawyer. Oh, you'll get one soon. Phil. Uh, yes? Uh, just wait till I scribble this. <laughs> right. Phone Doc Williams and CV says yes, will you? Trying to worry us, Chief Inspector. Just checking. There were four of you in this at the start. Now, well, there's only two. Two? Frank Humby hanged himself this morning. He couldn't take any more. You know why. Do we? Chief Inspector, you'd better remember a husband and wife can't be forced to give evidence against one another. I suppose, well, maybe Humby killed D.L. Then suppose it happened that Ed Ewell killed Humby's wife. Just don't try to involve us in murder. Remember, it was Humby and Diel who broke into our office. We proved that was a phony a long time back. Greta. And George, they're bumbling around. Nothing more. Then how would you explain Frank Humby getting home half an hour before your safe failures were seen making their getaway? Sir, he went off early. We've checked several things. You lived in a boarding house. On the night of the robbery, he came in around 1.30 a.m., but on the night Jean Humby died, he was back by 10 p.m. So he couldn't have killed her. Greta and I have our own alibi. We were together. Convenient for you. Go on, Colin. Doc Williams says yes. Thanks, Phil. You got that knife we found in Greenlaw's pocket? Uh-huh. Here it is. Uh-huh. An ordinary penknife. One blade, a screwdriver. Well, it's mine, so what? But one side of the screwdriver tip is worn. Now, I'm going to tell you what I think happened. Well, don't mind if I yawn. Young D.L. was going to contact Customs and Excise. He stumbled across what you were doing. Foolishly, he confided in Frank Humby. Humby told you to. So you planned for D.L. to be killed. With Humby being paid to take a robbery rap, which would cover things up. Nonsense. Just nonsense. Be quiet. Somebody was hidden in the back of Humby's delivery van when he got back late to the warehouse. But D.L. was already dead by then. And you gave Humby the robbery alibi. And while that was supposed to be going on, he was dumping D.L.'s body out in Flanders Moss. Only, your timing went wrong. I'm not answering any of this crazy story. All right. Let's talk about Jean Humby. She wanted to prove the police were wrong. And we were. She came to you for help, didn't she? You heard my wife. We're not answering. We uh, want a lawyer. But Jean had it wrong. She thought Barbara MacPhail had been with her husband. But when Jean Humby got home... Two people were waiting to kill her. One, a woman with dark hair. I'm blonde, Chief Inspector. And your hairdresser says you bought a dark wig a couple of months back for a party. Then this penknife, Greenlaw. I'll gamble the Scientific Bureau confirmed the screwdriver blade is the one used to take the back off that stereo set in Humby's flat. Now put your hands on the table. Hmm? On the table, palms down. You too, Greta. Why? Do what you're told. Oh, all oh, right. Now keep them there. I saw Yule's hands once we got him out of that bog. And now I've seen yours. 
Both Diel and Jean Humby had small bruises around their faces, bruises caused by fingers gripping hard as they were killed. <laughs> I don't care. He said, keep them there. Now, almost every one of those little bruises had a tiny, close to microscopic skin hemorrhage at one end. Sharp nails. And not Ed Yule's. His were broken and chewed. And yours are short, Greenlaw. Too short. They could have been cut, she said, of course. No. Fingernails are what's called keratin tissue. They grow at a steady rate. Now, what I asked Moss to find out was whether a forensic expert can look at someone's nails and say how long it is since they were last cut. Well, you heard the answer, eh? Yes. But we don't need more than a glance at your nails, Greta, do we? Prove it. Prove any of it. Oh, we will, in court. You used Humby to lure young D.L. and dump his body. You left Greenlaw and you to fake the breaking. You took Greenlaw with you to Humby's flat. Oh, yes. You're the one I want, Greta. You killed two people with your bare hands. What kind of a woman does that make you? I've nothing to say. Nothing. Sergeant McLeod. Sure. You and Beach take them away. Formal caution and charge. Yes, sir. All right, both of you. This way. Same. Well? No, nothing. Move out. <sighs> that's it, then. Ah, that's it, Phil. Like a fag, no, a towel. Light? Aye. Uh, uh, you'd better see this. It was telephoned in. What is it? A message from Kelso, your customs pal. He's getting worried about those whiskey samples he thinks you lost. He wants formal confirmation they weren't found. Well, we'll send him a letter. Get a couple of glasses, Phil. Eh? But that's his samples. Aye, but we're due a taste of proof, Phil, aren't we? <laughs> Two glasses coming up. That was The Taste of Proof by Bill Knox. With Paul Kermack as Chief Inspector Thane and Robert Trotter as Inspector Moss. The part of Frank Humby was played by Arthur Boland. Constable Beach, Michael Bruce. Sergeant McLeod, Robert Doherty. Mary Thane, Mary Riggins. Doc Williams, Michael Elder. Dan Lawrence, 